Rub up your engines! People always talk about the legend of Toyota Corolla, how long they can last. Here's an 07 that's been really abused. It's still running, it's got a check engine light. Let's see how it's handled up to all this abuse it's got. It's been hit a few times, you can see. Well, that's obvious, but that had to be replaced. There's the original one, you'd have to polish it up. People have attempted to make it look better by spray painting the old wheels. Not the greatest spray paint, but I mean, it looks better than the corroded rims that it would have been on since. Spent a lot of time in Massachusetts. First thing I'm gonna check here is the undercarriage. They rust there. Well, not too bad for Massachusetts. You can see there's some rust, but the frame's still pretty solid. Although you can hear as we start it up, the exhaust has some holes in it. Exhausts are bare metal. You're in Massachusetts, they throw salt on the road in the winter. That's the first thing that generally gets eaten up. Smaller repairs, nothing outrageous, but you're gonna expect that. And since the whole system's rusted, don't be surprised if you gotta replace a lot of pieces. That's just the way it goes when you get salt on the road. And you can see the rear brake drums, man, they're really rusting and flaking because they're bare steel. They probably would need replacement at some point. But then again, that's relatively cheap. We'll check the front brakes. They got rust on them too, but they're working good enough. And really today with places like AutoZone, O'Reilly, Napa, you can get remanufactured brake calipers, you can get drums relatively cheaply. That's not much money. I have to say this is one of the funniest mistakes I've ever seen in a Toyota. Obviously a four-cylinder engine. It's got the sticker for a 3MZE, which is a six-cylinder engine, three liters. As you can see here, it says 3.3 liter. Cause as you can see, this baby was made in Canada. My Matrix here was made in Canada. I've never seen a Corolla that had a V6 engine. Of course, this is a four-cylinder engine. If you look at it, it's pretty much the exact same engine that's in my Matrix, which is a 1.8 liter four-cylinder. You can see it's got the correct sticker. One ZZFE, you go up there, 1.8 liter. They got the wrong sticker on the car. But I think I figured this one out because this thing's been racked in the front. And when I look closely, I can see the hinges have been replaced. They're all clean and primed. So obviously this hood, say it's got a 3MZ FE engine, came from another car that had a V6 engine. Kind of shows you how a lot of the Toyota stuff's interchangeable because I've never seen a Corolla with a V6 engine. So this hood must have come off a different vehicle, but it fits on the Corolla. Good enough. You can see when you shot it, it closes and locks, but it's really funny if you think about it. Look at the door, it says 1007 it was made. We go under here, we can see it says the 2005 model year. So obviously the hood came from another car. It just kind of intrigues me that the hood out of a V6 fit on this. Corollas never came with a V6 engine in them. I guess the hood off of a Camry or something. <laughs> fit on this thing. Well, what do you know? You learn something every day. Now when I start it up, I notice the check engine lights on. Let's check it out. And of course this, the C-Scan, plugs into your computer. Since computers work so fast, you're gonna get a lot faster refresh and quicker data with the laptop. And we're going to go to E-Scan right there. Here we go. Click on E-Scan and up comes E-Scan. Basically sets itself up. First thing I want to do is check the engine code. So we turned it on and here it is. Torque converter clutch E0741. And as you just heard, this is a talking machine. It talks to us. It told us the fuel trim was good. This is a very good machine when you're doing a road test. It'll tell you what's going wrong while you're driving it. So you don't have to look at the machine. It'll say fuel trim's bad now or ignition timing bad. It'll give you all kinds of information. And it also gives you information right away on the code. Possible cause. Wiring, torque converter, solenoid stuck off. Right under it, the freeze frame, which is exactly what you want. All the information on one page. Now this is all metric. So it shows you the vehicle was RPM was 3,193.75. This thing is extremely the and the vehicle speed was on. Good. It keeps telling us stuff, but the vehicle speed sensor you can see was 132.00 kilometers an hour. So that's, I don't know, 70 miles an hour, something like that, whatever. That's when the problem occurred. Now it's got a code for the torque converter not working right, so we checked the fluid. But the fluid's perfectly fine and clean. So you take for a road test. They did tell me transmission was accidentally empty when she was changing the engine oil. Drove it a few miles and realized that and put the fluid back in. It could have damaged the inside of the transmission, so let's road test. Now the converter's working to some extent extent because as you can see it's in gear and it's not stalling when we stop so it's slipping like it's supposed to the problem here is I don't think it's locking the torque converter up at high speeds so we'll take it on the road in the country out on the highway and see what happens in top gear when you stop the torque converter has to allow some slippage right 
but when you're on the highway and it gets into top gear it's supposed to lock up so there's no slippage so you get better gas mileage so we'll take it for a spin and count how many times it shifts and see what it does at a higher speed so we'll stop here and we'll count the shifts as it shifts that's first gear second gear third gear gear overdrive's working so it's actually shifting fine but since the torque converter isn't locking up it's going to be less efficient you would lose a little bit of gas mileage maybe five eight percent gas mileage will go down because it's no longer like a standard transmission car where the transmission is directly connected to the engine via the clutch the torque converter will still have a little bit of slippage which you wouldn't have if the torque converter was being turned on so it's locked up when you're going to top gear like i say it's going into overdrive because look when i turn it off it goes to a higher gear and then we push it again that's the overdrive so this thing is going to lose a little bit of gas mileage but otherwise it runs perfectly fine so considering that the torque lockup solenoid costs 375 bucks is not in stock you have to drop the transmission take off the valve body and change it it's probably not a repair worth doing on this old corolla that still runs so good all it's going to do as far as it stands now is get a little bit worse gas mileage when you're at highway speeds now i turned the check engine light off but it's come back and when i look at the data again it's a torque converter we'll look at the freeze frame data and we'll check something out 79.2 percent load and the vehicle was going 132 kilometers per hour well now kilometers to miles that's about 82 miles an hour again the code tripped at a high speed because the torque converter is not locking up it will get worse gas mileage but you could drive it that way for quite some time probably they have been and it still runs good enough and just get a little bit worse gas mileage so considering the age of this car and since it's been all rusted out and the drums are all rusty from being in massachusetts all those years even with the toyota corolla don't expect perfection from a worn vehicle like this runs good enough we'll get a little bit worse gas mileage but it could still go a really long time it just won't lock up the torque converter anymore so now you know the truth about this old corolla the check engine light was bothering the owner but they weren't even complaining about the lock of gas mods they didn't even notice it so maybe you got a car like this you can live with it now it's pretty rare with toyotas and i'm assuming this only happened because it was run a few miles with no fluid in the transmission because the transmission fluid was inadvertently emptied out thinking it was the engine oil when they attempted to do an oil change so if you're going to do that kind of stuff make sure you're taking the right drain bolt off first and here's some bonus questions and answers solenoid says i got a question about a honda civic cvt filter and a transmission i've had my transmission fluid changed but nobody mentioned anything about a filter so i looked at this video on youtube and the guy showed him changing the filter is that real yes it certainly is real <laughs> <laughs> now god knows why but you got to take the air filter off a bunch of housing stuff but then when you get down there on the top of the cvt transmission at least you don't have to jack it up you can do it from the top you take it apart and inside you get a need those pliers you pull out this little filter about this big it looks like an old-fashioned gasoline filter we used to have in cars and yes you do want to change that filter imperative that you change the filter and no one ever talks about it yeah that's the hilarious thing i'm looking at maintenance and it doesn't even tell you to change the filter on a thing you need to on a honda let me tell you any car that's got a transmission filter like that that you can physically get to and replace it i'd change that thing every 30 40 000 miles if i were you learn how to do it you could probably do it half an hour yourself once you figure out how to do it and i'd change it every 30 000 miles it would be worth doing so you keep that transmission running as well as possible yeah and i'm glad you asked this question because this shows a lot of people out there you don't know about it and a lot of people don't know and they don't tell you about it that boom goes your transmission and you'll see it's not that hard to do it's a fascinating video too God doesn't say a single word. He shows you how it's done and he doesn't talk at all. What did it say? What you don't know can't hurt you? That's not true. It can destroy your transmission. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.